Let's go over MCA, ACA, and PCA infarcts. First, let's cover MCA infarcts, which are relatively common. MCA infarcts cause contralateral face arm or face arm leg sensory motor loss. Patients with large lesions often show a gaze preference toward the side of the lesion. You can remember this like they look at the lesion. And then they have some other symptoms that vary depending on which side of the brain is affected. Right-sided infarcts cause symptoms we associate with the right hemisphere of the brain, visual neglect and hemianopia, which is vision loss for half the visual field in each eye, and left-sided infarcts cause deficits we associate with the left hemisphere of the brain, like aphasia, more specifically Broca's aphasia for infarcts in the superior division and Wernicke's aphasia for infarcts in the inferior division. MCA infarcts occur in three basic regions, superior, inferior, and deep territory. Then there are also infarcts affecting all three regions that are called MCA stem infarcts. The superior division of the middle cerebral artery supplies the cortex above the sylvian fissure, including the lateral frontal lobe and usually the perirolandic cortex. Now remember, the lateral frontal lobe includes Broca's area in the dominant, usually left hemisphere. The perirolandic cortex refers to the region surrounding the precentral gyrus, which is responsible for motor functions, and the postcentral gyrus, which is responsible for sensory functions. Infarcts in the superior division cause contralateral face and arm weakness of upper motor neuron type and sometimes contralateral face and arm cortical type sensory loss. Also, impaired working memory and executive dysfunction. Infarcts on the left side result in a non-fluent or Broca's aphasia, whereas right-sided infarcts result in left hemineglect to a variable extent. The inferior middle cerebral artery supplies the cortex below the sylvian fissure, including the lateral temporal lobe and a variable portion of the parietal lobe. The lateral temporal lobe is comprised of three gyri that run parallel to the sylvian fissure, namely the superior, medial, and inferior temporal gyri. The superior temporal gyrus contains Wernicke's area in the dominant hemisphere, and in the non-dominant hemisphere, it's important for processing faces, including perceiving emotions on faces. The superior temporal lobe is also linked to insight-based problem solving and is the site of the aha moment, that sudden flash of understanding. The medial temporal gyrus is important for judging distance, face recognition, audiovisual emotion recognition, and accessing word meaning while reading. The inferior temporal gyrus is one of the higher levels of the ventral stream of visual processing, so it's associated with representation of objects, places, faces, colors, and may be involved in face perception and recognition of numbers and words. Infarcts in the inferior division of the MCA look different depending on which side is affected. Left-sided infarcts cause fluent or Wernicke's aphasia and a right visual field deficit. There might also be some mild right-sided weakness, especially at the onset of symptoms, and some right face and arm cortical type sensory loss. Patients can also have symptoms of Gerstmann syndrome because these symptoms stem from damage to the parietal lobe in the dominant hemisphere particularly the angular gyrus and adjacent structures. Motor findings are usually absent, but patients may initially seem confused or wacky, but otherwise intact and less carefully examined. Right-sided infarcts cause profound left hemineglect. Left visual field and somatosensory deficits are often present. However, they may be difficult to test convincingly because of the neglect. Motor neglect with decreased voluntary or spontaneous initiation of movements on the left side can also occur. However, even patients with left motor neglect usually have normal strength on the left side, as evidenced by occasional spontaneous movements or purposeful withdrawal from pain. Some mild left-sided weakness may be present. There's often a right gaze preference, especially at onset.
patients can also have anosinosia, which is when they are unaware of their neurological deficits. And there may be neglect and impaired visual spatial skills affecting construction, dressing, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Deep territory infarcts affect the basal ganglia and internal capsule. The basal ganglia are important for motor control, executive functions, including decision making, reward and addiction, and habit formation. The internal capsule is a white matter tract. The primary motor cortex sends its axons through the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Deep territory infarcts cause upper motor neuron type symptoms of pure hemiparesis on the contralateral side. Large infarcts can also produce cortical deficits as well, such as aphasia for left-sided infarcts and left hemi neglect for right-sided infarcts. To remember the deficits associated with middle cerebral artery infarcts, I think about middle child syndrome. You know how the middle child of the family is always complaining about certain things? They have these hand-me-down clothes that don't fit right and don't feel right, causing sensory motor loss by cutting off their circulation. Everyone's always loving on the oldest child and the youngest child, so the poor middle child feels neglected, hemi-neglect. It's almost like people have this blind spot for them. Again, hemi-neglect, hemianopia. Their older siblings act all superior and won't even let them talk. Broke as aphasia, superior division lesions. And their younger siblings, who are clearly inferior, are so crazy and wacky and can't even comprehend simple speech or simple instructions. Wernicke's aphasia, inferior division lesions. Plus, they're so inferior at a bunch of other things, too. They can't draw, they can't dress themselves, they can't really read or write very well sometimes, can't do calculation, they don't know their left from their right. These are all possible deficits associated with the inferior division. Deep down, middle children feel weak. Hemiparesis, deep territory infarcts. Now moving on to anterior cerebral artery, or ACA, infarcts. The anterior cerebral artery supplies the midline of the frontal lobes and the anterior parietal lobes, usually including the medial sensory motor cortex. The anterior parietal lobe contains the postcentral gyrus, which is the primary somatosensory cortical area. The anterior intraparietal area contains neurons responsive to shape, size, and orientation of objects to be grasped as well as neurons for the manipulation of the hands themselves. ACA infarcts typically produce upper motor neuron type weaknesses and cortical type sensory loss affecting the contralateral leg more than the arm or the face. Larger ACA strokes may also cause contralateral hemiplegia, at least initially. Dominant ACA strokes sometimes cause transcortical motor aphasia which is a type of non-fluent aphasia where speech production is reduced and it contains many paraphasic errors, but comprehension and repetition are intact. Non-dominant ACA strokes can produce contralateral neglect. ACA infarcts can also cause some frontal lobe dysfunction depending on the size of the infarct, including a grasp reflex, impaired judgment, flat affect, apraxia, abulia, and incontinence. Sometimes damage to the supplementary motor area and other regions in the frontal lobe causes alien hand syndrome, movements of the contralateral arm that are not under voluntary control. To remember the deficits associated with ACA strokes, I think of the Affordable Care Act, which is also abbreviated ACA. This act provides medical care for upper class people, upper motor neuron, people who feel weak in the legs from years of not having health care, cortical type sensory loss, trans people, transcortical motor aphasia, and sometimes other people who feel unseen or neglected, contralateral neglect. Sometimes even aliens get health care coverage, alien hand syndrome, because our government isn't that organized, frontal lobe dysfunction, and doesn't always have the best judgment. Moving on to PCA infarcts, the posterior cerebral artery, or PCA, supplies the inferior and medial temporal and occipital cortices. 
The medial temporal lobe is important for declarative memory. The occipital cortex is the visual processing center of the brain and contains most of the visual cortex. PCA infarcts typically cause a contralateral homonymous hemianopia. Smaller infarcts can cause smaller homonymous visual field defects. Sometimes the thalamus or posterior limb of the internal capsule are affected, causing contralateral sensory loss, contralateral hemiparesis, or even thalamic aphasia if the infarct is in the dominant, usually left hemisphere, thereby mimicking features of MCA infarcts. PCA infarcts that involve the left occipital cortex and the splenium of the corpus callosum can produce alexia without agraphia. You can also see memory deficits if the lesion extends to the medial temporal lobe, especially the hippocampus. For a left PCA infarct, you would see more verbal memory deficits, and for a right PCA infarct, you would see more spatial memory deficits. PCA deficits are easy to remember because you know by now that the posterior part of the brain is where the occipital cortex is, and so you know that it's important for vision. You just have to remember that memory deficits are also common if it affects the hippocampus. So now you know the deficits associated with MCA, ACA, and PCA strokes. Please like and subscribe if you want more free study videos for neuropsychology board certification.